Good afternoon, welcome to Raglan Electric Bikes, continuing to mess with CAN networks and the Nissan Leaf local battery computer. This is the first one where I've brought in the Raspberry Pi and I want to pass on my knowledge, the knowledge gained on this, to avoid other people going through the pain that I've gone through. Um, so essentially I have never worked with CAM before, I'm aware of it, um, but yet yeah, have no understanding of it and have no understanding of Raspberry Pis, very, very limited understanding of Linux. So I'm coming at it from the complete newbie slash idiot perspective and I've had some problems which we've managed to work through and I'm trying to pass them on to you guys so that maybe you, if you're trying to do something similar, don't have to go through this same pain. So, let me start. This is a Raspberry Pi 3B, running the latest release as of July 2018 of Raspbian operating system. And then on the top here is a PiCan 2 board. This is in fact PiCan 2 Duo. Duo because it's got two CAN um, devices on it, CAN A and CAN B. Now, to make that work on your Pi, very easy to just attach it, but then you've got to tell your Pi how to recognize it. So, there is the device. Um, how to make it work. We go to here, and it says you've got to find your config.txt, that's all pretty obvious. Basically, it says start with a fresh install of the operating system, then go into your config.txt and add these lines. So these are two lines that essentially tell the Pi what you've stuck on it and how to interact with it. Um, so you've got CAN0 for one of the CAN um, devices and CAN1 for the other one. And you've got these interrupt numbers and you put all of that in and it doesn't work but it doesn't really tell you why it doesn't work, and so you just get irritated. Um, and after trying to find what you've done wrong, you look at the information for the single CAN board. So this is a similar board, only it's only got one CAN interface. Doesn't exactly look like half the other, because instead they've put room for connectors and buttons and things. But anyhow, you look at its instructions, and its latest instructions, it's only got one line, because it only wants one device. However, there's a subtle difference. It goes CAN0, comma, oscillator. Whereas this one goes CAN0, dash overlay, comma, oscillator. Take out that dash overlay from both of those lines and suddenly everything is sweet. So that's one easy place to fail. Next place that can trip you up, it hasn't tripped us up too badly, but it's, we've got it right, so hopefully it won't get us wrong in the future. These here. So if you look, those little jumpers, so they're just shorting things out. They're not very elegantly done, but they, they, get, they get what you need done, done. Um, if you look at how the board arrives, it has nothing. So that bit there, not sure why it's wobbling on me. You can put a jumper in there. So luckily my buddy had some spares knocking about. So we soldered a couple of jumpers in. So what that does, oh dear, I can't do it one-handedly. So this guy here with a jumper in, that connects to a 120 ohm resistor. With the jumper out, there's no resistor. Now, if you've done your homework on CAN networks, and even I might have find this out, so I'm sure you know this already, a CAM network is essentially just a pair of wires called CAM H and CAM L, and at either end there is a resistor. It's 120 ohms. Like that. And then your device, your CAM node as they call it, comes off there 
and you can have lots of those and there's lots of different rules about how many of those you have but what's really important is that you have 120 ohm resistor at each end. Now that gives you the opportunity to put a resistor in or not. So essentially what these two devices are on this point are that and that with you know, that removable. If you measure the resistance of your CAN bus, so essentially if you measured this now across here, you would see, so I've got this little bus which is just basically this device and then, oh, not that, coming back into this one. So that's all there is on this network, it's really simple. If you measure your resistance across these two wires, you will see that you've only got 120 ohms because only that one is in. And you know that, that it's meant to have 120 each end and by very basic calculations that means the total should be 60. So if you see a 120 ohm resistance on your network, then you need to have your resistor in and that will bring it down to 60 ohms. So that's tip two and that's pretty simple. Now, if, like me, you bought the twin cam board, you're both blessed and cursed. So, what do I mean? As you can see here, you call these things, oops, if I had it in the right place, can zero and can one. So, over here, if I wanted to make one of the networks come up, so can zero, I would type that. So we've got set can zero up, type can, bit rate, 500,000. That seems to be the absolute standard for communicating with cars. That's something else that took some research and I didn't get it positively confirmed, but that seems to work. So anyhow, you set up your can network, you get it going, can zero, and it doesn't really confirm that it's done anything. If you've got your can board not set up incorrectly, like the hardware configured wrong, you will get an error there. So that is actually a good sign, even though it hasn't told you anything at all. But anyhow, you've got that going, CAN0, excellent. So, right, let's see, we're gonna connect CAN0 to the device we're interested in. Oh, it's CAN A and CAN B. Well, zero, what have we got here? We've got zero, and we've got one. And we've got A, and we've got B. Well, obviously, the low number is gonna be the low one, so, a is going to be 0 and B is going to be 1. Well, no. Through a bunch of finding out and testing and not getting things working, we actually found that on this one they're labelled the other way around. So can B is 0 and can A is 1. So that's how you're cursed by having a two, two board, a two device board, because you have the opportunity to communicate with the wrong one and get zero results which is very hard when you're starting out. The good thing about having two, though, is that you can do what I've done here and just make this network back to itself and very simply verify that the board is working. And you do that by, first of all, setting one network up. Come on, focus. So, CAN0 is up, and then we use a command to basically listen to everything that is on that network. Where is it gone? No, we don't. Okay. What we do is we're gonna send the message on that network. So we're gonna get CAN1 up as well. Oh, Neil. Sorry, operating the camera and talking and trying to operate a computer. It's a bit beyond me. So, yeah, there we go, CAN1 up, same bit rate. So now we've got both of these guys essentially ready to communicate at the right frequency. So this lower one, let's find the command that we've used previously, K. Okay. That can dump basically means dump everything that's on the network, on the CAN network, to the screen. 
So again, we get no confirmation that anything's happening, which is not very rewarding or reassuring for the first timer, but it is listening. So then we go up to here where we're dealing with the CAN zero device and we do a CAN send. So we send, oh, we don't send anything as complicated as that. What we do is we send a really basic message. I wonder if I can remember what the basic message should be. Can send, can one. Um, so an identifier and then a hex code, which is, this is apparently a standard one. Just a funny one to test it. So we send that, when I hit enter, this, the can dump, registers that something went on the network. So there we go. Identifier of one, two, three, four bytes, or bits, sorry. Not sure which, need to do more homework. D, E, A, D, B, E, E, F. So that's, that's awesome. You have got your um, you, you, you've proved that your network works. Just remember that zero may not be A, may not be B either. You've got to do your own testing, I believe. Um, and then you're all ready to go. The last thing in my notes to tell you about is hex numbering. Now this is something that is so obvious when you know how. So if you see hex written down, you see OX, 3A, for example, and you also see uh, no, OX9F. Now, here's something I didn't know. All the OX stands for is what follows is hex. So that, that isn't the number. It's a bit like when you're writing a price down and you write 953, but you would never put in your calculator dollar symbol 953. And it's the same with this. So if you wanted to put these hex numbers into your program, you wouldn't write OX3A, OX9F, you would just write 3A, 9F. So, with those newbie mistakes out of the way, you are now free to go and fly and flourish and get hacking anything with a can. I hope you found this useful. Um, at some point in this series of videos, you will find out what on earth I'm trying to achieve uh, for the project. But the point of this video was to teach you something. I hope you've learned something. If you are one of those guys who knows everything and has watched this just to find out how they can take the mickey about where the video creator has gone wrong, please leave constructive comments. That would be wonderful. Um, and so far my channel has had almost entirely constructive comments. So keep it that way. Be nice to each other. And have a good life.